All right, what's on the bench? It's a DC 504 counter timer from Tektronix. The little uh, pull tab is broken. Uh, might be able to fix that. So let's see here. The first thing I'm gonna do before checking it out really is to adjust the internal oscillator, um, which is pretty crude. It's just a one megahertz uh, crystal, one of those really big ones, and a capacitor that you uh, that you fiddle with to make it one megahertz, and then it counts from there. So um, probably not the most accurate time base, but that's the way this thing is designed. Um, I don't know how fast this thing goes. I don't. I don't know how many megahertz this thing will go up to. But anyway, uh, what we need to do is we need to adjust it. So there's a test point, and let me move the camera. So uh, this is the insides. It's just a single board. Uh, everything is on sockets. And down there is a clock chip, some type of Mostec clock chip. Uh, the crystal's there. And then there's a, uh, a big uh, a capacitor, adjustable capacitor there. And so what we're going to do is we're going to adjust that while looking at a counter and seeing if we can get one megahertz out of it. And so it is not very good. Let's go ahead and uh, display fewer digits so I don't have to don't have to stare at them. So yeah, there you go. Oh my goodness, it's just going all over the place. Well, Tektronix finest. Let's uh, let's put a uh, that change at all. I'm trying to figure if I need to use a insulated tool here. All right, I'm going to adjust that capacitor. That's making it go lower, I think. Let's just make it go higher. Oh, there we go. All right, there we go. I think that helps. I have a times 10 probe on there now. And uh, let's see if I can adjust it now. Yes, now I can adjust it. So I was just loading down that node. I didn't read the instructions. It probably says use a, a high impedance input or capacitively coupled or something. But anyway, this this works just fine. I can I can adjust I can adjust it better. And I don't know how accurate I need to be, but I'm going to try to be as accurate as I can, which I think is about there. I think that is well past its uh, its uh, intended use. So we'll call it quits there. And then we'll use it as a counter and see if it can measure 10 megahertz. I'll get my rubidium standard hooked up here and see if we can't measure 10 megahertz. Okay, I've got my rubidium coming in and it looks like uh, 10 megahertz. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, we can get a uh, pretty good resolution out of it. Okay, so I'd say it is calibrated. So let's uh, let's stand it up on end so it is readable. There we go. How about that? Well, I don't think there's much to say about this particular plug-in. It's got a trigger level uh, adjustment on it. And you can see that it's clocking here. Um, it has a frequency um, where you can look 0 0.001 hertz. Uh, it has a totalize. I don't know how that works. Let's see here, hold. Will it hold? No, just totalizing. Oh, it's over, overflowed already because I'm going too fast. And then here's counting. These are per seconds. Uh, how come the per seconds isn't working? Hmm. Is it? I don't know. The per seconds doesn't seem to doesn't seem to be working. Maybe it's going too fast. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't do. Let's hook it up to something slower and uh, measure that.
Okay, I hooked it up to one kilohertz. There's one. <laughs> uh, one kilohertz, 1 1.000, very good. Uh, oh, there we go, total, now it's counting, it's doing totalizing. I can hit reset and make it go to zero again. So that's just, that's just counting, that's kind of fun. And then this is per, yeah, the 10 megahertz was just too fast for it. Um, so I'm not sure, like I need to, probably should, before I started the video, I should have looked up the specs of this thing. It's probably a 10 megahertz counter or something, I don't know. Anyway, it all seems to be functional. Okay, I just looked up the specs and it's supposed to be a 100 megahertz counter. So let's hook it up to something that'll output 100 megahertz and uh, we will see if it does what it's supposed to do. All right, I've hooked it up to a 50 megahertz um, and we're getting 50 megahertz. So let's try, uh, let's try 80 megahertz and let's try 100 megahertz. Uh, it doesn't like 100 megahertz. Let's try 90 megahertz. And, oops, nope. 80 megahertz. It'll do 80. <laughs> uh, I think it's just, I, it's probably specification for triggering. Let's see here, let's do 90 megahertz again and adjust the triggering level here. See if we can't get it to, can't get it to trigger on 90. Nah, it's just, probably a more healthy drive and maybe a square wave drive or something you get to 100 megahertz but it'll do it'll do 80 megahertz uh, wasn't it doing 80 maybe it was oh it's ju oh just oh the yeah triggering is just on the edge 75 megahertz 70 megahertz yeah 70 megahertz is fine uh, it's, it is touchy, a little bit touchy for trigger. 70, 75, okay, 80. Uh, no, it's starting to starting to flake out at 80. So there you go. Um, yeah. But 50 megahertz is just fine. So I thought I'd show the insides again. Uh, look at the date codes. 1980, 1980, 1980, 1980, 1979, 1977. <laughs> they had a lot of 7474. They must have bought a lot of those in bulk in 1977. It looks like a 1980 unit, something like that. Yep, everything's 1980. Uh, this is that strange chip over there. A, uh, Mostec, uh, I can't read it from here. Too small for my eyes. An MK5009P. Some kind of clock generation chip. But everything else is in discrete logic. It's all 7400 series. Um, and there is a echo part down here at the bottom. Not sure what that's doing down there, but there is an echo part down there. Uh, way down over here, there's one. And then there's a, a analog input section here to do the Schmidt triggering type of thing. Uh, there's a switch here that probably sets, uh, oh yeah, DC and AC, DC and AC input you can change. You can change there. And then over here we've got some, looks like some debug things normal, internal or external. Yeah, you can bring signals in from the back. You can kind of see this wire here. This is if you want to bring a signal in from the bus, you can put it on internal. Um, but yeah, there you go, LED readouts. And uh, some kind of little switchy thing here, probably the classic uh, Tektronics uh, little fingers on a PC board type of switching down here. But uh, there you go. So one more plug-in for the collection. Um, this is a DC 504 counter timer.